The Plurivac A6000-08LF Adult Pediatric Chest Drainage Unit is a sterile, non-pyrogenic unit intended for single patient use only. To begin, activate the swivel floor stand at the bottom of the unit. Use the sterile bottle on top of unit to fill the water seal chamber. Open and twist to break the bottle seal. Attach the exposed tip into the suction port. Squeeze the bottle repeatedly until fluid is inserted into unit. Fluid will come up to the 2 cm line. Fluid will turn blue when inserted into unit. Connect patient tube to the thoracic catheter. Remove and discard the cap on the patient tube, which is present for aseptic technique. Attach the connector at the end of patient tube to the thoracic catheter, force-fitting until secure. Use of tape is optional at hospital discretion. In case of gravity drainage, omit this step. Be sure the suction port is uncovered. If suction is prescribed, simply connect the suction tubing to the suction port on the Plurivac drainage unit. Attach the other end of the suction tubing to the wall source. No fluid is required in the suction column. Increase source suction until the orange float appears in the indicator window. The position of the suction dial determines the approximate amount of suction imposed, regardless of the amount of suction source, as long as the orange float appears in the indicator window. It is important to turn the regulator up until the orange float appears. If you do not see the float, continue to increase source suction until the float is in the window. The unit is preset at minus 20 centimeters of water. If the prescription is for minus 10, 15, 30, or 40, Rotate the red suction dial until the red stripe in the dial aligns with the prescribed level and clicks into place. If the unit is set up as instructed, the clinician should observe the following. If suction is prescribed, the float will appear and stay in the window as dialed. If there is no suction, then there will be no float in the window. The water seal is the indication of presence or lack of air leak. Intermittent bubbling would indicate the presence of an air leak. No bubbling would indicate the lack of a patient air leak. Note, fluid may oscillate in the seal with breathing dynamics. If the clinician observes constant bubbling for extended period after connection to the suction source, troubleshoot to ensure there is no leak at the connector or product site or along the patient tube. Patient drainage may cascade into the collection chamber, starting with the first column within the chamber. Check periodically to ensure adequate suction is being applied to the unit and that the orange float valve is in the suction indicator window. If the suction setting is decreased from a higher level to a lower level, patient negativity may remain at higher level unless negativity is reduced. Use the high negativity release valve to reduce pressure to desired level. The operation of the manual high negativity release valve is described in the safety valve section. There are three functions to a water seal chamber. It provides a barrier to allow air to escape from the patient and not re-enter. The patient air leak meter allows for observation of the degree of the air leak. The fluid in the seal also measures amount of negativity the patient attains. The patient air leak meter is quantified from low, 1, to high, 7. The higher the numbered column through which air bubbles, the greater the degree of air leak. The clinician may keep track of the progress of the air leak in the patient chart or by markings on the unit, depending on hospital protocol. The patient negative pressure is the sum of the suction column plus the height of the water in the small arm of the red water seal. For example, with suction on at 20 centimeters and fluid level in the seal at 10 centimeters, the negative intrathoracic pressure is minus 30 centimeters. If suction is off, negative pressure is the height of the fluid in the seal only. The positive pressure valve opens automatically with increase in positive pressure, preventing pressure accumulation and a potential pneumothorax. It is next to the suction port and air will escape if there is an occlusion in the suction tubing. Do not obstruct the positive pressure relief valve. The high negativity float valve automatically activates and preserves the water seal in the presence of high negative pressure. Water floats the valve into the closed position. The fluid level will also break at high levels above the float valve, limiting pressure buildup. 
The manual filtered high negativity relief valve is provided to manually vent excessive negative pressure. Note the fluid level in the small arm of the seal. Depress the high negativity valve to vent negative pressure. Filtered air will enter the unit and the fluid level in the seal will drop. Release the button when the desired level of negativity is attained. Caution. If suction is not operative or is on gravity drainage, depressing the high negativity release valve can reduce negative pressure to zero or atmosphere with resulting possibility of a pneumothorax. The collection chamber has a capacity of 2,500 cc's. There are four columns within the chamber. Increments of measure are 1 cc up to 100 cc, then 2 cc to 200 cc, and then 5 cc increments to capacity. Monitor the collection chamber and replace the unit before capacity is attained. Changing the unit to insert the section unit for the original patient. Prepare the second unit according to setup instructions and place it next to the original Plurivac unit. Separate the red and blue connectors on the second Plurivac unit. Clamp the patient tube on the original Plurivac unit. Separate the red and blue connectors on the original Plurivac unit, keeping the original tubing from the red connector to the patient. Attach the blue connector of the second Plurivac unit to the red connector on the original patient tube. Open the clamp on the original patient tube. After noting the fluid level, discard the original Plurivac unit per hospital-approved aseptic guidelines. Rotate the red and blue connector to where connector is in the down or inverted position. Use a standard lure lock syringe for withdrawing samples. No needle is required. Option one is to utilize a dual collection chamber model which has two separate patient tubes and two separate collection chambers. With this device, drainage can be measured from each chamber. To identify the source of a patient air leak, tubes are pinched separately to determine from which catheter placement the patient air leak may exist. If the intermittent bubbling stops in that tube when pinched and resumes when released, that would indicate the air leak still persists there. To remove one catheter, it is imperative that the corresponding patient tube be removed. The catheter must be clamped to ensure closed system. PE-105 is an accessory plug that may be inserted into the blue connector of the removed patient tube to maintain a closed system. When wiring two thoracic catheters, remove the protective cap and straight connector on Plurivac tube and discard the cap. Insert the 3 8 inch sterile Y connector into the Plurivac patient tube. Obtain and insert two sterile small tubes to the Y connector. Note, Plurivac tubing may be used if no separate tubes are available. Attach a connector to each short tubing section. Attach two short tubing sections to the two thoracic catheters. Note, if two thoracic catheters are used, both must be attached to a Plurivac unit. Prepare the two units per instructions. Obtain two short sections of one quarter inch tubing. Obtain a one quarter inch Y connector and insert into the two short suction tube lengths. Attach one section to each of the suction ports. Attach the one quarter inch standard suction tubing to the Y connector. Increase the wall suction source until the float is in each of the Plurivac unit indicator windows. Turn up the suction source until this is achieved. Note, placing Y connectors close to the Plurivac unit and decreasing standard suction tubing length will decrease the dead space in the tubing and assist in elevating both floats. If both units are attached correctly, and only one float elevates, the second unit without the float is imposing negative pressure, but not the setting on the dial. Increase the source suction. When milking or stripping chest tubes, it is important to follow hospital policy. If chest tube stripping is performed, milk the tube in short sections. Avoid flattening of tube in long sections, which can increase patient negative pressure. Note. 
Stripping of the patient tube must be done with the patient tubing clamp open. Stripping with the clamps closed can result in the buildup of excessive positive pressure. Keep the unit upright and below catheter level. Do not tilt the unit to a parallel position. Carry the unit using the handle on top. Do not use two hangers on the side of the unit to ambulate the patient. With suction on, continuous bubbling in the seal may indicate the presence of a disconnect. Check the connection of the catheter to the Pluravac unit. If bubbling persists, use a Pluravac clamp or hospital-provided clamp to clamp the patient tube from the catheter to the unit to see if the leak stops. If continuous bubbling persists, change the Pluravac unit as directed by the IFU. The fluid level in the water seal should cascade with the breathing cycle. If your observation does not detect movement, check to ensure tubing patency and patient condition. The A6000 has built-in protection to protect the fluid from exiting the water seal during clinical use when tipped over. Do not turn the product upside down. While fluid remains in the seal when tipped over, in the absence of suction with this technology, the seal can be broken. Note, fluid can cascade among the four sections of the collection chamber. To restore the unit upright, note patient and fluid levels and either replace the unit or continue use in accordance with hospital policy. The auto transfusion bag, A1500-08LF, can be utilized to perform reinfusion when required. Obtain and unwrap the ATS bag. Attach the Pluravac bag to the side of the Pluravac unit using the foot hook at the bottom and the hanger on the side of the unit. Close the two clamps on the top of the bag. Close the clamp on the patient tubing and drain blood from the tubing back into the Pluravac unit. Disconnect the red and blue connectors in the patient tube. Remove the blue protective cap from the bag tubing and insert the bag connector into the blue connector on the Pluravac tubing. Remove the red protective cover from the collection tube on the bag and connect it to the red connector on the patient chest drainage tubing. Open all clamps and secure all connections. The auto transfusion system is now operational. Note, there are two scales on the bag, one for gravity drainage and one for suction calibrated at minus 20 centimeters of water. Note, the bag will cascade inward with suction on and stay extended without suction. That is why there are two scales. Read the appropriate scale. To remove the auto transfusion bag, Use the high negativity release valve to reduce excessive pressure to the prescribed level if applicable. Close all clamps of the patient tube and auto transfusion bag. Disconnect the red and blue connectors. Securely attach the blue and red connectors in patient tube. Open the patient clamp. The Pluravac unit is now operational. Attach the red and blue connectors on top of the auto transfusion bag. Remove the bag from the Pluravac unit by disconnecting the hanger and foot hook. Preparing auto transfusion bag for reinfusion. Slide the wire frame off the bag and discard the frame. The A6002-08LF. This is a dual collection chamber product that sets up and operates exactly the same as the single chamber A6000-08LF, except that it has the two large collection chambers, 1900 and 950, two patient tubes with inline connectors, and needleless sampling ports. With this model, the collection from each separate thoracic catheter can be measured. This is only to be used with a minimum of two thoracic catheters, with each patient tube attached to a catheter. The A9250LF is a sterile, pyrogenic free product intended for single patient use, which is used for the collection and reinfusion of autologous blood, if required. This can be primarily accomplished as a continuous reinfusion device, collecting and reinfusion patient autologous drainage directly from the filtered collection chamber 
via a rapid transfer bag or approved reinfusion pump. Alternatively, an autotransfusion bag can be inserted into the patient tube for collection and reinfusion. The A6020-08LF is specifically for infants. It sets up the same as the A6000-08LF. Activation of the floor stand is similar to the A6000, with additional telescoping length provided to enhance stability. The collection chamber on the A6020-08LF is much smaller, and with increments in 1 half cc to 10 cc, and 1 cc to capacity of 150 cc. The dry suction control operates up to 30 centimeters of water. The 6050-08LF. This is a pre-mated version of the A6000-08LF, an autotransfusion bag A1500-08LF. It eliminates the need to attach the two separate products in cases where the autotransfusion bag is anticipated to be used ahead of time.